Chapter 511, Robber and Murderer, Lu Xiaoshu Lu Xu put his feet up on the table. He stared blankly in the direction of the warehouse. He once had great aspirations to maintain his image and identity until the best opportunity to settle his affairs. Yet no one could understand his suffering on the inside. That was several hundred thousand magical stones. Lu Xu felt that if he could successfully sweep up all those magical stones, what an amazing feat he would have achieved. After all, the Heavenly Network only produced less than 200,000 magical stones annually. If Lu Xu could take all these magical stones, it would be a severe blow to the collection of God's face. Lu Xu felt that he had finally found a reason for himself. If he did not make a move on all these magical stones, he would not destroy his image as Yamada Akira, but he would destroy his image as Lu Xu. Lu Xu felt that happiness was still the most important thing to people. Lu Xu pondered over it. They had four days of staggered holidays every month. He only needed to get approval from his superiors on these days. He could then go out of this fortress and to Nishinokyo with confidence. There was a possibility that he would be arrested by the collection of gods once he reached Nishinokyo. He may not be able to leave the country by the normal routes. Even the retreat route prepared for him by the Heavenly Network may be impossible to use. Besides, the collection of gods would definitely put Nishinokyo on lockdown if that amount of magical stones went missing. But, for this many magical stones, Lu Xu was willing to even swim back to his country. Since he had made this decision, Lu Xu had better come up with a thorough plan. His eyes had regained their vigor. Then Tom Osaka brought the previous head of science to Lu Xu's office. Lu Xu looked up at the two of them and asked languidly, What's wrong? The previous head of science sneered. We are all colleagues here. Give me some face. Since you've collected my money, you have to complete the task for me. Lu Xu turned his head to look at him. Suddenly, his eyes lit up. Of course I'll do it. Who said I wouldn't do it? But do you think that it is so easy to talk to Lord Kuriyama? I need time. Besides, we work in three shifts. The manpower for the next two shifts has not been confirmed. I have to confirm the manpower for all three shifts before reporting to the superiors. Does this make sense? Does it make sense for me to disturb Lord Kuriyama again and again to report the change in manpower? The previous head of science was dumbfounded. He turned to see Tom Osaka, whose expression was filled with some uncertainty. This was different from what you had said. Wasn't his attitude quite good? And he made a lot of sense. Even he knew that it was difficult to get along with Kuriyama. One would certainly be scolded if they kept reporting to Kuriyama over and over again. Tom Osaka was dumbfounded for some time. I apologize. I misunderstood you, Lord Yamada. No problem, Lu Xu said with a kind expression. After I have confirmed the manpower for the next two shifts, I will go to Lord Kuriyama. Tom Osaka left. Within two hours, another two people came with a box each. One of them smiled obsequiously. Lord Yamada, I heard that Tom Osaka said you were settling the manpower for the next two shifts. I am very conscientious in my work and very loyal to you. I can assure you that I will follow you wherever you go. Lu Xu uncovered the box and took a look. He gave a nod of satisfaction. Okay, I got it. Go. After he finished speaking, Lu Xu saw that there was no one in the office. He took the opportunity to put the three boxes in the seal of lands. Since he had decided to run away, then he would do it one by one. Lu Xu wanted to ask every one of the 120 Class E practitioners whether they wanted to become a leader, but he was afraid that his actions would suddenly be exposed. If the price was high enough, Lu Xu was sure this head of science would be willing to do it. Since Lu Xu had decided on his course of action, he was impatient to get back home. Lu Xu walked out of his office and headed towards the lift of the underground base. Upon seeing this, Tom Osaka and the rest were elated. 
This Yamada was really honest and trustworthy. They did not expect him to actually go and settle the problem after collecting the money. When Lu Xu saw the three of them, he smiled and nodded at them. He then went straight to the underground base. He first went to the dorm and as expected, Kawayoshi was loafing on the job to train. He even held a magical stone in his hand, absorbing its power. Hmm. Why are you here? Aren't you on duty upstairs? Kawayoshi had just gotten his and Lu Xu's magical stones. He saw Lu Xu and was now slightly scared of being found out. Nonetheless, he immediately readjusted his composure and spoke with heavy emphasis. If you are leaving your post without permission like that, I will have to report to Kuriyama. Ka. Without waiting for Kawayoshi to finish speaking, Lu Xu hit Kawayoshi on the back of his neck. Kawayoshi's eyes rolled back and he fainted. Lu Xu squatted down and carefully observed Kawayoshi. Seeing that he had no reaction, Lu Xu then shook Kawayoshi awake. Kawayoshi slowly regained his consciousness. He could not understand what had just happened even if he tried. Lu Xu sighed. You won't awaken this way either. Kawayoshi suddenly recalled that it was Lu Xu who had knocked him out. But Kawayoshi was slightly uncertain. How was it possible that he could not avoid Lu Xu's blow, even though Lu Xu was much weaker than him? Lu Xu was thinking of another problem. Earlier Chiba had undergone an awakening after Lu Xu had delivered a karate chop on her. Furthermore, she had awakened two consecutive times in the same day. Lu Xu thought that he could actually help people awaken, but it seemed like that was not the case. Or was it because Chiba was too particular about Kirihara Yusuk? What a pity. His income was big, but he had lost one of his plans. To be honest, if Lu Xu could really help people awaken with just a blow, then he might as well be a craftsman. He possessed some craftsman skills. Kawayoshi did not hesitate. As soon as he regained consciousness, he drew his katana and slashed it in Lu Xu's direction. Needless to say, Kawayoshi's other aspects made Lu Xu detest him. But his counterattack at this moment made Lu Xu view him in a more favorable light. His combat awareness was very high. Once he knew that the situation was no longer in his favor, he would not engage in any useless talk, instead, he would go for the attack. But the sound of the katana slicing the air spontaneously came to a stop. The blade was caught between Lu Xu's nails, unable to move further. Kawayoshi knew that the situation was worsening. Even a class C could not stop his attack so easily with just two fingers. Kawayoshi was dumbfounded. He could not understand how someone he once took lightly had suddenly become so powerful. From Nagaya Kawayoshi's distress, plus 999. Kawayoshi shouted, Who in the world are you? He only realized after shouting that the base was so well built that no matter how loudly he shouted in the dorm, no one would be able to hear him. Lu Xu laughed. Don't you recognize me? Kawayoshi forced himself to calm down. You. I am your father who does not share your blood, Lu Xu laughed. He no longer hesitated. He aimed at Kawayoshi's neck and it split with a clean sound. From Nagaya Kawayoshi's Distress, Plus 999 Chapter 512, Shrouded in Darkness, but Headed Towards Hope Not even on Death's Door did Kawayoshi think that the class, D beginner Yamada Akira he knew was the ninth heavenly king they had been looking for all this time. As for him being able to kill Lu Xu at any time, this was probably only possible in his dreams. Not even the entire collection of gods could defeat him, except for Takashima Tairatsu and Kitamura Kijitori. But Kitamura Kijitori was not in this base, while a Class B expert like Takashima Tairatsu could not possibly stay in this base the entire time. So at this very moment, Lu Xu did not have any enemies in this base. The only variable was when Takashima Tairatsu would arrive, Lu Xu could not confirm this. Furthermore, he had no cellular data and could not establish a connection with the outside information systems. He was thus unable to know Takashima's whereabouts. 
Lu Shu looked at Kawayoshi paralyzed on the floor, his neck bent in an unnatural angle. Lu Shu did not have even a bit of compassion for him. As long as they were a member of the collection of gods, he could kill them. Of course, he had to avoid a violent massacre. Lu Shu had realized that there were many spies from the heavenly network in the collection of gods. If he had accidentally killed a spy and this was made known to the collection of gods, he would feel guilty. He was not a cold-blooded person, just a little selfish. But this did not mean that he had no intention of killing others. He still had a lot of targets, for example Kuriyama. He was afraid that in Kuriyama's eyes, he was simply a class D and not worthy of acknowledgement. Lu Shu laughed coldly. He took seven magical stones from Kawayoshi's body. As for the magical stone in Kawayoshi's hand that been absorbed halfway, Lu Shu did not discard it either, he simply tossed it into the seal of lands. Even if it was absorbed halfway, it could still be sold for money. Even if you have several hundred thousand magical stones, you still had to live, right? It was easy to go from a poor to a rich lifestyle, but it was difficult to go from a rich to a poor lifestyle. Lu Xu felt that he had to maintain the honorable tradition of being hardworking and thrifty. Mystic water rushed out from the seal of lands, getting rid of all the evidence. Kawayoshi's katana had provided the mystic water with new energy. Lu Shu had wanted to disguise himself as Kawayoshi and approach Kuriyama, but his height did not complement that of Kawayoshi's. Lu Shu left and went to find Kuriyama's office. He knocked on the door, but there was no reply. He knocked again, but there was still no reply. Lu Shu recalled that the sound insulation in the base was very good. It couldn't be that even the sound insulation of the office door was that good? Or was there simply no one inside? He needed Kuriyama's approval for leave before he could sneak out. He decided to try again. Knock knock knock. Lu Shu almost broke the door. From Kuriyama Kumo's distress, plus 399. From Miyazaki Yu's distress, plus 499. With a ding, Lu Shu realized that the indicator above the door had turned from red to green. Kuriyama's voice, filled with anger, resonated from inside the room. Come in. Kacha. The door unlocked. Lu Shu pushed the door open. He saw the female practitioner called Miyazaki buttoning her shirt. Even two of Takashima's underlings had been involved in this? Lu Shu was dumbfounded. Kawayoshi, Kawayoshi, did you really admire someone like him? Kuriyama angrily said, don't you know how to press the doorbell? Miyazaki was elegantly seated at the sofa by the side. She was touching up her makeup, completely ignoring Lu Shu. Lu Shu was gloomy. He had completely forgotten about the existence of the doorbell. This is my first time in this underground base. I didn't know that there's a doorbell. My apologies, my apologies, Lu Shu laughed and closed the door. What have you come here for? Kuriyama adjusted his own clothes, as if he was not concerned that Lu Shu knew his relationship with Miyazaki. It's like this. I want to take leave to return to Nishinokyo, Lu Shu said with a laugh. Kuriyama was dumbfounded. He was suspicious. You just came here. Now you want to go back? Yes, today is the seventh day after Nojoa Hakushun's death. I'd like to pay him a visit, said Lu Shu. Kuriyama suddenly fell silent. Kuriyama never thought that Yamada would still pay his respects to Nojoa Hakushun even after his death. He really prioritized his feelings. Go then. Kuriyama edited Yamada Akira's exit permit on his computer. The fortress could only let him leave if Kuriyama had given his approval. Kuriyama suddenly added on to his words. If you could do the same for me, I will not oppose you. Lu Shu was shocked. He had simply made up an excuse to go out, but here you are pouring out your feelings. He paused for two seconds before speaking again. Okay. If you kick the bucket, I will visit you seven days after as well. From Kuriyama Kumo's distress, 
plus 999. From Miyazaki used to stress, plus 399. Kuriyama was dumbfounded. Was I talking about you visiting me seven days after my death? You must be out of your mind. Kuriyama's expression darkened. <laughs> Go pay Nojoa Hakushun a visit. You will immediately know the aftermath of being presumptuous. As he spoke, Kuriyama picked up the phone on his table. It was like it was specially made for use in the underground base and still had cellular network. He keyed in a number. Go and dig up Nojoa Hakushun's grave for me. He hung up the phone and laughed coldly. Go and experience the taste of pain. Remember to press the doorbell the next time you come. Lu Xu was melancholic. How nice it would have been if Nojoa Hakushun had provided him with distress points upon his death. It looks like you won't be needing that doorbell anymore. But seeing how things have turned out, I won't be able to visit you seven days after your death, Lu Xu laughed. Lu Xu had not even finished speaking. The moment Kuriyama hung up the phone, Lu Xu seized the opportunity. His corpse dog and concealed arrow flew out with a buzz. The room swayed under a ring of waves. It was too late for Kuriyama to even think of reacting. There was fear in Miyazaki's eyes. No one would have expected to see the swords only the Heavenly Network possessed, what more the two swords that were seldom seen. Kuriyama wanted to dodge to a corner, but he was still in midair, and he had just gotten hold of his shuriken. The blade pierced through the air and attacked Kuriyama while he was defenseless, piercing through his head and heart. Miyazaki was no longer her previous elegant self. The terrified expression on Kuriyama's face seemed to have frozen in time. The scattered drops of blood spread in the air. It was like a rose, whose vitality had been severed at dawn, blooming in hell. Shrouded in darkness, but headed towards hope. Lu Xu calmly stood in the office. It was as if the air in this underground base had been refreshed. He greedily took a deep breath. This was his true image. Chapter 513, Lu Xu the Iron Fist Who on earth are you? Miyazaki asked, locking her brows. Lu Xu thought silently, why are you all so fond of this question? What should be his answer this time? Lu Xu pondered for two seconds before he confessed, I am the legendary man of beauty and talent. Not good. You may call me the socialist iron fist. I beg your pardon. From Miyazaki used to stress, plus 999. Then she asked, but you didn't use your fist just now? It was not to be taken literally. Before Lu Xu could figure out an explanation. Miyazaki drew from her long hair an extremely thin silver thread and darted towards Lu Xu. The silvery string chain glimmered ominously. Lu Xu tilted his body to avoid the attack, and the string had already cracked the wall behind, revealing the soundproof layer and the iron compartment within. Lu Xu was stunned by the strict protection installed around Kuriyama's office. No wonder his door knocking could not be heard. In the next instant, a silvery butterfly emerged from the thread, dashing in Lu Xu's direction. As it flapped its wings, waves of silver dust swept towards Lu Xu, who instantly poured out his divine water as a wall of defense. Her weapon was a sacred item that possessed a weapon spirit. Just when Lu Xu was busy defending against the butterfly, Miyazaki hurried to Kuriyama's office table. But Lu Xu would not let her succeed. Her haste had revealed that there might be alarm buttons at the table. Miyazaki might have underestimated the volume of Lu Xu's divine water, which could easily fill up the entire office. In a split second, the water expanded out like a giant web, expecting Miyazaki stumbling into the trap. The golden snake swam upwards and aimed at Miyazaki's neck at lightning speed. The energy in Miyazaki's spirit chi armor was rapidly drained as the snake fed on her power from the bite. In an instant, her armor cracked, creating an opening, and the divine water gushed in. Miyazaki gave up her attempt at resistance, her eyes filled with malice and desperation. From Miyazaki used to stress, plus 1000. This time, Lu Xu destroyed his image for a few tens of thousands of magical stones. 
Yet, in his report to Nye Ting, he would claim that he had killed multiple Class Cs, including two of Takashima Tairatsu's underlings, and consequently dealt a severe blow to the collection of gods. That made perfect sense. Anyway, he himself was only a Class C too. The collection of gods had lost a great deal at the Kochang remains. Yet, another disaster had come to them. As for the magical stones. What stones? What are they? Hehe. <laughs> Never heard of them. Besides the fight, Lu Xu had decided not to surrender what he had earned through his own hard work. In the worst case scenario, he would surrender 100 of them to show how rich he was. Carefully, Lu Xu cleaned up the battlefield. But he left the closets and drawers untouched. Based on Miyazaki's action earlier, there might be certain gears or alarms that Lu Xu did not wish to trigger. In the meantime, Lu Xu noticed that his golden snake was particularly interested in Miyazaki's weapon. After the loss of its host, the silvery butterfly returned to the chain, and the snake gulped the entire chain like how people sucked in noodles. Gradually its belly became bulging. At its side, Lu Xu felt freaking hungry too. Last time Lu Xu obtained the golden snake as his weapon spirit after the divine water engulfed Nojua to Kenabu's magical katana, now he wondered what would happen next when his snake ate up another weapon spirit. After a while, the snake had swelled by a fair amount, and even its golden scales had become more distinct. No way. The snake actually feeds on weapon spirits. Lu Xu was dumbfounded. Magical weapons with spirits were always on high demand, but almost none were for sale. When the snake fed on normal magical weapons, the only thing that had changed was the volume of the divine water. But when it fed on weapon spirits, the change was in the snake itself. Now, it could straightaway swallow weapons like shurikens instead of wasting time eating it bite by bite. However, how much money would it cost? Lu Xu was wondering how good it must be to sell magical weapons with spirits if he came across one again. Why the need to feed his snake? A more fatal trump card or money? Lu Xu was unable to choose. As a matter of fact, Lu Xu was not really just a miser. He wanted to gain possession of all the resources he could find for a sense of security. Tracing it to the core, his greed for money stemmed from his dread of poverty in the past. He would never want to experience those days again, when he had to think twice before buying Lu Xiaoyu a stick of hawthorn candy, or when he could not afford to cook fried tomatoes with eggs for Lu Xiaoyu every day. In the past, he had no security without money. And now, his very act of feeding those magical weapons to the divine water was for that feeling of security too. Money didn't disappear. It is still with me, but in another form, Lu Xu comforted himself. After that, Lu Xu walked out of Kuriyama's office and took the elevator to the surface. Everything was normal around him as if nothing had happened. Even now no one knew that just a few minutes ago, a so-called Class D had effortlessly wiped out two of Takashima's Class C underlings and a Class D collection of God's head of department. Maybe even Kuriyama had found it inexplicable. As for Miyazaki, her sitting posture was still elegant as always just ten seconds before her death. After that, it had all ended. And Lu Xu's duty here was to blend into his enemies under a suitable disguise. When the time was right, he would deliver a deadly blow. Lu Xu believed the loss of a few tens of thousands of magical stones would really be deadly. Tomosaka was ecstatic seeing Lu Xu again. How was it, Lord Yamada? Did Lord Kuriyama agree? Lu Xu smiled. Rest assured. He has agreed. Lord Kuriyama asked me to check the stock inside warehouse number 19. You may carry on with your work. Despite the possibility of earning some distress points, he decided to make Tomo Saka happy so that he would not interfere while Lu Xu was away. Every detail must be well thought through. Now, the only matter on Lu Xu's mind was to take out everything in warehouse number 19 smoothly. Cheerfully Tomo Saka went to notify the other two people. As the captains, they were the bosses on the ground, 
because the higher-ups could not be bothered to waste their time on low levels like them. Tomosaka knew the situation well too. It would be hard to ascend to class D or C for a man like him. Thus, the wisest option was to expand his fortune there. When the door of warehouse number 19 was wide open in front of Lu Xu, he felt as if he was in the dreamland. The magical stones were there waiting for him. Perhaps nobody else could take away so many stones, but Lu Xu had his seal of lands. Chapter 514 The Collection of Gods on Full Alert Warehouse number 19 stored everything transported over from the temporary transfer warehouse. Rows of boxes were neatly arranged. Besides magical stones, Lu Xu planned to take everything else as well. As for the four trucks of human goods, they had been transferred to some other place. The affair was managed only by Kuriyama's most trusted men and had been treated as a top secret in the collection of gods. It was understandable. Li Xieni would certainly beat them flat if he ever found out about their human sacrificial rituals. Moreover, the practice itself was downright unethical. If the information leaked out, the international reputation of the entire organization would suffer. Lu Xu suspected that they might have extended their evil plan to foreign metahumans too. Lu Xu closed the door. Darkness returned to the warehouse. Then, using the divine water as his source of light, Lu Xu opened every box that contained magical stones. All the stones disappeared the second his hand reached into the box. It was so fast. With the seal of lands, this was an easy task. Like a black hole, Lu Xu absorbed everything in the warehouse, with only empty boxes left behind. Pillaging the warehouse was his greatest takeaway from this Japan trip. Only when everything was safely kept in his seal of lands, did an unprecedented sense of security and peace rise in Lu Xu's heart. According to the label on the boxes, there were 1,000 magical stones in each box, and there were 92 boxes. In other words, Lu Xu had gained a whopping 92,000 stones in one shot. He did not mean to exaggerate but the current Lu Xu had the affluence comparable to that of an entire country. Of course, he was referring to smaller countries. Afterwards, Lu Xu carefully put the boxes back in place. He would not appreciate any suspicion when he opened the door later. At this moment, Lu Xu heard sounds of the ground trembling from far away. Dust was falling down from the warehouse ceiling due to the shaking. Was that an earthquake? Didn't seem so. It felt more like a weighty creature marching on the ground, shaking the earth beneath its feet. Having packed up the boxes, Lu Xu left the warehouse at once. The outside was in chaos. Tomosaka came to him and asked worriedly, Lord Yamada, what's going on? I don't know, Lu Xu replied, since you were outside, did you hear anything about it? Tomosaka almost trembled in fear. I'm not sure either. I heard there were two class B knights coming towards us. They must be giants. Lu Xu had never heard about any class B giant knights. He then turned to Tomosaka. Follow me. There's something I need to tell you. With that, he pulled Tomosaka into the warehouse. Have you ever heard the sound a caw? Huh? What kind of a cock are you talking about, my lord? Before he could react, his neck had snapped with a caw. From Tomosaka Toshi's distress, plus one thousand. So far, the only person who knew Lu Xu's visit to warehouse number 19 was dead. Thus, if anyone wanted to crack the case, they must check the access card log in the control room. No matter what was happening, Lu Xu decided to leave at once. With the permit to leave granted by Kuriyama, going back to the city would be a piece of cake. At this moment, the footsteps were drawing closer and closer, seemingly aiming right at the base. Ear-piercing sirens sounded outside the walls, upon which numerous people were running and shouting, Alarm! Alarm! Enemy attack! The mansion has been destroyed. Lu Xu was dumbfounded. What was going on? The collection of God's mansion had been destroyed? Was it a full-out invasion against the collection of God's? 
Despite the constant turbulence in the realm of cultivation, no one would casually start a practitioner's world war. Who on earth had the guts to assault the collection of God's main base? After the incident at the Kochang remains, the pyramid structure inside the collection of gods had lost its balance. The number of high-level practitioners had plunged significantly. Moreover, not all collection of gods members were concentrated in Nishinokyo at the moment. They were scattered across the entire country. According to the information given by the Heavenly Network, the total population of Collection of Gods members in Nishinokyo was around 3,000, with their strongest fighters being Takashima Tairatsu and Kitamura Kijitori. Suddenly, lights across the whole base went out one by one. This was soon followed by the deafening sound of an explosion from somewhere in Nishinokyo. Darkness shrouded the entire base. Needless to say, electricity was vital to a city. What a smart move to destroy their electricity supply system first. Shock and horror befell the collection of God's base. After half a minute, light returned to the building as the backup electricity system kicked in. Lu Xu caught a man who had just run down the enclosure walls by his collar. He demanded, where are you going? From Maeda Tomasaki's distress, plus 199. My lord, I'm going to call for help. An enemy attack is coming. The man's feet almost left the floor under Lu Xu's lift. He was in a hurry to report the situation, but now he could not even escape Lu Xu's grip. Who are the enemies? Lu Xu asked curiously. Not sure. They are very scary. Survivors from the mansion have confirmed the destruction of the mansion. And Lord Kitamura Kijitori is currently engaged in a battle with the enemies, the man explained, anxiously. The only information so far is that there are not too many of them. But they are very strong. At this time, a giant elevating platform was activated in the center of the base. Over 1,000 members had come up from underground. Judging from the total number, they should be all of Takashima's manpower. The collection of gods was on full alert. Like a fighting machine, the entire collection of gods had geared up for the battle. But what kind of enemies could make them so alarmed? Could it be Nye Ting? That would be awesome. But Lu Xu knew it was almost impossible. He had suspected the two knights to be ancient heroic spirits summoned through Chin Bailey's magical spells. They must be strong enough to be able to beat Li Xiao up in the bathroom. But spirits like this could never be sustained for this long. After a while, Lu Xu had finally ruled out the possibility of the involvement of the Heavenly Network, because the two knights were clad in European-styled armor. Chapter 515, Coral Odin Johnson A group of people were asking each other questions. Where are Lord Kuriyama and Lord Miyazaki? We haven't seen them. I didn't see them either. They may still be in the office. They can't be contacted, and no one answered the door either. Someone explained, as if the relationship between Kuriyama and Miyazaki was no secret. Don't discuss the Lord's private matters. Get into your formations. Don't be messy. Level 1 alert. Someone said with no fear in the face of danger. Since Lord Kuriyama is not around, I will temporarily take over. Lu Xu walked away from the chaos. This chaos in the collection of gods was only temporary. They had high combat discipline and would most likely get into their formations very quickly. Lu Xu had to escape quickly. Lu Xu came to the main gate. The guards at the gates coldly looked at him as he approached. They did not move one bit. He showed his exit permit to the two guards. Let me go. Lord Kuriyama has given me approval. It's level one alert now. No one is allowed to leave, said the expressionless guard. Lu Xu had a vague premonition. Whose alert is this? My approval is from Lord Kuriyama himself. This is Lord Takashima's alert. What a pain in the ass. Kuriyama was impressive, but he could never reach Takashima's level. 
since Tairatsu had given the order to prevent anyone from leaving, it looked like Lu Xu had no choice but to kill his way out. Lu Xu's murderous intent surfaced. Since there was chaos back there, this was his best chance to sneak out. The main gate suddenly opened at this moment. Lu Xu saw Takashima briskly walk in. Lock the main gate. No one is allowed to leave without my permission. Close the steel gates. Brother, was it really appropriate for you to come back at such a timing? Now that you're back, what do I do? How am I supposed to bring out my precious magical stones? The steel gates came down with a crash. The entire main gate was completely blocked. The steel gates were for the collection of gods to resist aggression from the outside. Lu Xu never thought that they would make use of the gates so quickly. No one could leave without Takashima's permission. Takashima looked at Lu Xu. What are you doing here? Um, I came to see if I could help in any way, said Lu Xu, as if nothing had happened. On the inside he was hurting. He could not escape even with over 90.000 magical stones in his hands. This was a cause of worry for him. Takashima had no time to care about him. He leaped up to the castle wall and observed the distance between them. Lu Xu did not dare to directly break through the wall. Takashima was now supervising this place. Lu Xu did not know what he would do if Takashima decided to disregard the outsiders and go for him instead. He silently returned into the fortress. He approached a class C, who was organizing the manpower. As the troops prepared to mobilize before the battle, Lu Xu heard him say, the deities attack troop. We can no longer tolerate such a situation. We must survive or perish with the collection of gods. I vow to survive or perish with the collection of gods. I vow to survive or perish with the collection of gods. Lu Xu gasped. The deities? Wasn't that the organization Coral was in? After Lu Xu had come to the collection of gods, all the information he had received was related to the collection of gods. As for the information from the deities, Nye Ting did not know of the relationship between Lu Xu and Coral. But Lu Xu could not understand why Coral would come all the way here. The deities were so far away from the collection of gods. It couldn't be for personal reasons, right? There was no way for Lu Xu to confirm this, but inside he already had a vague answer. There was typically no connection between the deities and the collection of gods, since there was a large distance between them. But if she had suddenly come to attack, Lu Xu could not believe in any other reason other than to avenge him. This was a very complex feeling. There were actually other people willing to risk their lives for him, other than Lu Xiaoyu. Lu Xu was touched beyond words. But her arrival was just too timely. Lu Xu was unable to connect with the outside world now. As he pondered over the situation, he shouted along with the hypnotized crowd. I vow to survive or perish with the collection of gods. People eventually stopped shouting. This slogan was simply to boost morale, if they continued shouting, how would they deploy their defenses? In spite of this, Lu Xu continued shouting. That class C expert could no longer take it. Stop shouting. Stop shouting. Lu Xu froze. He looked at the class C. Are you willing to survive or perish with the collection of gods? I vow to survive or perish with the collection of gods. From Kawano Teru's distress, plus 666. Lu Xu suddenly asked, How many people are coming from the deities? The class C was dumbfounded. It looks like only the new female leader and two exceptionally large steel knights are coming. Lu Xu almost coughed out blood. What is this? Only three people are coming. In reality, Lu Xu did not even count the two knights as people from the beginning. They were knight puppets previously from the deities, so strictly speaking, only Coral was coming from the deities. To Coral, this was her personal grievance. Although the entire deities crowned her as the master of gods because of her Odin bloodline, 
but the problem was that she did not want to involve anyone from the organization in her own meaningless sacrifice. As long as it was a battle, there would certainly be fatalities. Furthermore, the reason the deities were so willing to respect Coral was not simply because she had awakened the Odin bloodline. As there were not many strong class Bs in the deities, they could not be sure that the only person who could awaken the Odin bloodline was Coral. They wondered whether there were others who could do so too. Even if Coral originally had a Gungner at the back of her neck, everyone else would simply wait and see. But it was precisely during this period of hesitation that the two night puppets everyone had thought were only for decoration had suddenly pledged their loyalty to Coral. They had also become the marks on Coral's left and right hands. This also meant that the two knights were now Coral's personal possessions. Others could not even make use of them. The knight's loyalty was the reason that made the entire deities unite together. As everyone understood that since the real master of gods had appeared, they had to pledge their allegiance to her as members of the deities. If Lu Xu had obtained distress points from Coral, he would have realized that Coral's name had changed to Coral Odin Johnson. In a nutshell, this kind of organization was much better than that of the collection of gods, as there was no dispute once their leader emerged. But what made them troubled was that their leader was currently heartbroken over the death of a heavenly network expert, to the extent that she had no appetite every day. Everyone felt that this could not go on. If Odin starved to death, what would happen to the deities? Was she joking around? Hence, someone went to tell Coral, you have to eat. Only then can you advance to Class A and avenge his death, right? In the end, the person who had suggested this really wanted to slap himself in the face. The next day, Coral disappeared. Who could have known what she would do? doesn't mean to be happy Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens